Um, that's just the way it goes, I suppose. Yeah, and um, penalty try, I don't think anyone has an issue with that. I don't know what the yeah. protocol is on field for sending them up. Do you send them up as a no try, but ask to consider the merits of a penalty try, or do you send it up as a penalty try, and then ask the video ref to deny it as a penalty try? I think it's a bit different to the live call of a try no try when it's a penalty try I think but I'm not sure maybe I'm wrong so I, I don't understand the protocols around that um, Greg Eden was great weren't he for, for Cass I think yeah well he Eden did what Eden does and intercepts and breaks away to score kind of brings him back in at a half time um, yeah he I was very I good I voted for him as my man of the match on our league I, I kind of think because he was the only Cass player I think there was a bit of um, reaction stuff by the fact he got it. <laughs> oh no, he wasn't the only cast player. Was he I not? Think Gareth O'Brien was on there too, but he wears a Toronto oh, kit on our league, so yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, I mean, he, 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 Eden was good, but Eden was he, Eden was Eden. That's what he does. He, he scores tries and and looks impressive, and then does does something stupid. That's that's Greg Eden. So. Some nice, really tight, close finishes from the the wingers in 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 the game. Um, but the fact that Cass were doing it with 12 men when Leeds were doing it with an extra, with like, you know, Cass did it with a man less and yes. Leeds did the same thing with a man extra, I think says that Cass were probably the better side in the second half um, overall. But they they, caught, they hurt themselves with key errors, you know, after the referee had not helped them in the first half, even though he'd made some mistakes that did help them, he made some that didn't. And, um, and all in all, I. I feel a bit sorry for Cass on this one the first time all year I feel a bit sorry and Daryl Powell wasn't an arsehole about it after the match either which was nice yeah you know well even uh, you know maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he's seen the light as well yeah 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 well I think he's he's definitely got seems to have come to an attitude of um, I did I did like that he said about uh, if they make an, an 18 playoff he'll be all for it ha 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 and then his team are ninth <laughs> 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 but don't tell Daryl that part um, let's oh, do gee. let's let's wrap this week up then uh, with, with the Super League action so stat line of the week I've pulled out three tries two try assists ten tackle busts 270 metres and five clean breaks and no matter what you think about Salford being recovering from a Challenge Cup final, that's impressive. Yeah, no, it is. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to denigrate it, but I, you know, I'm just. I'm just providing a little bit of balance. And there was loads um, of other options. Luke Yates was certainly a contender. I see. Yeah. See, see, since you mentioned and you pulled out the 150 tackles, whatever it was. Um, yeah. Was it? Uh, yeah. He's my. He's my stat line of the week. He's Luke Yates for the um, for the effort. Definitely. Player of the week. Um, virtuoso individual performances. It's, it's Bevan French or Reece Lynn. I, I I would lean towards Bevan French because I saw his whole performance, whereas I only listened to Reece Lynn's and then saw the highlights. So, mm. so that's why I'd lean well, towards Bevan French is because of that. Yeah, well, I, I had Lynn down, so so that, that, I think I think we agree there. And then highlight of the week, we're probably gonna cut that same fine line because I'm going to go with French's long range solo try I just think that weaving run between two defenders was brilliant but there were so many good tries this week that could have made the cut you know um, Naguama's try Benjamin Bishop's second try or Riesling's first try no yeah first try yeah yeah it, there were almost too many good tries to, 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 to pick out this week which is um, yeah it's, well, that's a good with... sign Let's go with highlight of the week being Kalepi Tank and now we're doing the bookies. <laughs> a weird one. Then, what about the standings? Okay, so Saints this top with a seventy-five percent win record. Wigan are second on seventy-three percent. Warrington and Catalan both have sixty-seven percent, but Catalan have only played twelve games, as already discussed. Uh, Leeds are fifth on sixty percent. Hull FC in sixth are on fifty percent, and distinctly hoping for a sixteen playoff. Huddersfield have forty-four, hoping for a seventeen, and Salford have forty, hoping for an eight team. Uh, Cass are ninth with thirty-eight percent. Uh, Wakefield are off the bottom with 25%, uh, and now Hull KR have just a 19% win success rate. 
in terms of the prediction Super Ruin Fantasy League. Uh, I was six out of seven, and Tim was four out of seven. Tim's big, big problem was back in Hulk Hearts. <laughs> um, always, always a bad idea. Yeah, in the Super Brew, um, I'm top. Tim second, your third, and Sarah's fourth. That's for the host one. For the main one, Steve Pye stays in, stays in top spot. When I looked, there was no yellow caps handed out yet this week. I guess Super Ruer is confused as the rest of us are as to how these fixtures are working. But the Fantasy League got its act together this week and everything was updated today. Alan Bagley is top, obviously. obviously. The best weekly score this week, though, was 890. And that was by me. Which is nice. Wow. Especially given that three players didn't play any games in my in my side. But Bevan French, Liam Farrell and Luke Yates were big points as <laughs> well. Yes, I was gonna say you couldn't you couldn't have picked three better ones there, really, frankly. No, exactly. Um uh, okay, cool. Uh well make sure you get in your fan reviews on the next week's games. At, whenever they happen and whichever ones go ahead so that we can talk about them next week because um, we had a few games missed with fan reviews for the first time this week and they're probably the two games that had the most exciting tries to talk about so we didn't shortchange the games but there you go um, No, I, I understand it's, it's difficult because you know, games are happening when you're, you're not expecting them and all sorts this uh, at the moment as well, isn't it? Yeah Okay, let's, let's move on and talk about the NRL Grand Final then, shall we, Al? Let's do it so we move on to other results and the big one down under it was the nrl grand finals this week and in the men's final it finished disappointing for most i'm sure panthers 20 the storm 26 Couple yes, of people David, got in touch on this. St. David got in touch. He said, Oh dear, cut my morning walk short to watch this live. Wish I hadn't bothered. Penrith, very unlucky, but no way back after that first half. Damp squib. What time was he up for doing his walk? <sighs> way, way earlier than me. Obviously, put it that he hadn't way. changed his clock, yeah, had he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Webb 58 said, Given the accepted wisdom of NRL's superiority in all aspects compared to Super League, this was disappointing. Both teams made numerous errors. Referee struggled to make the right decisions despite constant referrals to the bunker. And the commentary resembled Sky on a bad night. Obviously quick and intense, but I enjoyed last week's cup, uh, Challenge Cup final more, than, more, both as a match and presentation. Oh. And Lee Whitnell said, I don't really like the Storm, but you can't help but be in awe of them when they hit their flow. It felt like every bounce, every breath of wind, every decision went their way in the first half and they ruthlessly exploited it. Penrith got their own touch of luck in the second half, but couldn't turn that into twenty the 27 points needed for the win. Pappenhausen was a worthy uh, Clive Churchill medal, but Nelson Asafa Solomona was unlucky. He was mega. You disappointed as well? With the game? Yeah. Well, result, game, everything. Um, do you know what? If I'd had to listen to Phil Gould all year, then I would not have given a shit about the Panthers winning this game before the game kicked off, the way he prattled on during this game. <laughs> if I'm honest. I, I, I'll tell you what, you... Obviously, um, we get the Fox coverage here usually, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, I know Voss has got his critics and stuff, and um, he's liable to a bit of hyperbole and, and all sorts, and, and you know the other Fox reporters. But my God, they're better than Channel Nine's. Channel Nine stuff need pensioning off. Well, they needed pensioning off ten years ago, but um, that's a different matter. But God, their commentary is bad. It's, it's I, that I, I, same I situation that we faced in Super League, where was sort of Steve-O and Eddie becoming tired because of their, almost like their rapport and long-standing relationship Mm. and it's the same with with Gus and Rabbits I I think in the NRL because I think if Gould wasn't there Ray Warren would would be still a really good commentator Um, and I think the other pieces they have around them on 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 Channel 9 do work quite well Um, 
during the game. I didn't get Fittler's half time or pre game or whatever it was, look back at sideways look back at the year. I didn't I didn't quite get that. That seemed like comedy from twenty years ago style. Yes. But um didn't seem modern and fresh like the Fox coverage feels more like. But I do think they were better than, say, Brave and Asta. But the there's just you'd have taken Fox's third string commentator you know forget Voss or Smith you'd have taken the third string current commentator over over the, over this yeah. situation yeah yeah. it was I'd, allowed I'd, to I'd, prattle I'd on too long yeah. and it was almost in, it was encouraged like keep talking about Penrith's juniors keep talking about like trying to make things dressed up a certain way yeah the thing is right the, particularly like the um, the penalty try decision, right? Um, Stonewall, absolutely certain penalty try every day of the week. He kicked the ball out of his hand. Well, we got some people that. objecting to that, actually, on the Twitter feed during the game, saying that people should be entitled to put a part of the body in front of the ball. But like you say, it wasn't putting a part of the body in front of the ball to stop a try. It, it, it was a motion of the, of the foot, of the leg yeah. towards the ball. It was a kick attempt. It was. Yeah. It, I'm sorry. That's that's a that's a penalty try, and it always is, and it always has been. So, and Gould's bullshit about oh his leg was just there and just give me a break. Do you know what I mean? That's just rubbish. And the um, no try, the Panthers, the um, Crichton no try. I think was was no sorry Mansell no try from the Crichton obstruction. I think clearest day, hundred times out of a hundred. The bunker gives that as a no try, no controversy. He ran and took the outside shoulder of the defender, where the player took the ball inside of his outside shoulder, and then went around the back of him before making mm. the pass. It, it, it was stone wall. I don't understand how anyone was questioning that either. Personally, it didn't make sense to me. But th- this is the trouble. It- it had become a narrative by that point, you know. The Panthers were getting shafted, um, and that's that was just that. Even though the truth was that, as you as as I've kind of come to see from the Panthers, they're very good, but they they all. I also have this feeling that they're quite brittle. They're kind of they've got a feeling of cast twenty seventeen about them. Incredibly dangerous, but if things start to go wrong things just keep going wrong it was um, kind of a question of who was going to step up with the composure weren't it mm. um, especially in the periods where Tamar was off the pitch because he can't play the whole game who, who's going to bring the composure to that side at that stage and I don't think anyone delivered it I don't think anyone else had the experience to deliver it really no and there was there, there were a couple of chances where you know Melbourne were Melbourne and Purple Cheats is, is not a, you know, it's a nickname gained for many reasons. Um, and, you know, not many people like them. Um, but they're, they're ruthlessly efficient, aren't they? And they take advantage of things that they had the opportunity to do so. And they, they took points, you know, they, they kicked penalties when they had the chance. And, you know, they're like the, the Cameron Smith try. And, you know, <sighs> he was lucky, but they took the opportunity. And they they scored when they had the when they had the chance yeah. to. So, well, yeah, like Lee's sort of saying, every bounce of the ball, it felt like it went for the storm. But that's because the storm made sure it did. They were they were on it. They were on it from the start, and every Very physical to be on it. You know, because they actually, if you look at the refereeing, every decision that went up to the video ref went in went up in favour of the Panthers, but came out. Not in favour of them, apart from the ludicrous rap run around kick for the for the Toto try. Because let's face it, normally you'd see that giving us an obstruction for as long as I've been watching the game. Yeah, I'm not convinced that the defender actually was obstructed from. You know, I'm not sure he was influenced out of the play by the dummy runner that he ran around, but it was close to the line, and he ran around the back of his own player. And then took an advantage from it. it it's an obstruction, um, and that was in favour of the Panthers. I think the only decision that really went against the Panthers, actually, as a real decision against them, was the kick out 
offside one. I felt that was really harsh because I'm not even sure he was offside. And I know he picked 